Hello, I'm Ethan Drake, and in this video, our group will be presenting our proof of concept for a tree storage and watering system we developed for the city of Charlottetown. After our discussion with Nick Walker, we had four main takeaways from our original conceptual design. As we initially decided to have a tileable design, hoses were used to transport water through all units and hydrate trees with a sprinkler system. It was pointed out that these hoses would be relied on heavily, and the potential of their failure would result in a design that would not function. The tarps that covered the interior walls were used to prevent sprinklers from degrading the wooden walls and had no further functionality. The interior walls and poles we were using to keep the trees upright were deemed to be only moderate solutions to that issue. And finally, the lack of a bottom on our conceptual design created a high likelihood of ground instability with the accumulation of mud due to excess water. This is our final design, which uses a flood irrigation system to water and store trees. Trees are put in the system by cubic meter tote bags. They are held in place further by plastic composite lumber, lumber walls and fed water by two 40 gallon reservoirs. The total footprint is nine feet by nine feet plus the reservoirs. I'll now hand it off to Dawson to discuss each part of our design in detail. The exterior walls of two by four plastic composite lumber are used as structural elements for the tote bags that hold the trees. These walls would also share the purpose of continuing to support the trees if they fall over. The walls will be reinforced with multiple short studs. Plastic composite was chosen as a strong alternative to wood lumber while also being resistant to water damage and rot. The tote bags being used to hold the trees up are one cubic meter in volume. These bags are sized to give a tight but comfortable fit for the trees, adding to the stability. The bags are at a sufficient size to be efficiently inserted or removed from the system when managing the trees and performing maintenance. A water reservoir system was decided upon to provide a more precise method of watering as well as facilitating flood irrigation into the design. Two equal reservoirs are placed on opposite sides of each other to allow for equal water distribution to all the trees. By filling both tanks to maximum capacity, water use will be accurately measured. A plastic lined bottom is used to contain the interior walls. It is held in place by nine foot two by four lumber. The plastic liner is used to hold water within for flood irrigation. Additionally, keeping water from flooding the ground beneath, preventing buildup of mud, causing instability to the whole system. The main challenges that we discovered when planning this design were whether the water would seep into the tote bags and whether the soil would be able to soak up the water when both burlap sacks and tote bags separated them. To confirm our design and solve the challenges, we conducted two tests. One, to find out if the water would actually displace through the tote bags, and one to see if the amount of water used affects the quantity of water that seeps through the tote bags. I'll now hand it off to Johan to discuss the tests we conducted. To conduct the first test, we used three burlap sacks filled with salt to simulate the root, tree root balls, a woven polypropylene top to simulate the tote bags, and a plastic bottom to hold the water. Water was then poured into the system in increments of 1.5 liters. After pouring 3 liters of water, the side with 1 sack started to fill up, and after 7.5 liters of water, the side with 2 sacks started to fill up. The system was checked after 12 hours and it was determined that the soil soaked the water all the way to the top. This meant that the water was successfully able to pass through the burlap sack and soak in the soil. Since the sides started to fill up at different times, this meant that there was issues with the top and after checking the top, we found out there were holes. Because of this, we decided that it was best to conduct a test that checks the water quantity that will seep through the top. The second test was conducted to find out if the weight of the water was a factor in the water's ability to seep through the top. To do this, we collected two containers that had the ability to hold different amounts of water and the same top material used in the previous experiment. We then covered the tops of the containers with the top, also making sure that there was no holes in the top. Water was then poured on top of the top. Increments of 0.5 liters were used for the bigger container, 
while only 0.1 liters was poured on the smaller container's top. After 1.5 hours, about 98% of the water from the bigger container seeped through the top, but none of the water seeped through for the smaller container. This does note that the weight of the water was a factor in the seepage through the top, and the design would need further modification. I'll now hand it off to Pierce to discuss our budget. After talking with Nick Walker, we learned that we had a lot more freedom with our budget than previously understood. With our new design, we prioritized quality materials while keeping, maintaining a reasonable budget. We estimate that one unit holding 16 trees will cost $1,043.07 plus labor. Seven units will cost $6,823.34 and would hold 112 trees total which is our estimate of the maximum amount of trees present at the time. Trees need two gallons per inch, and that would be four gallons of water for the trees that we have. 16 trees per unit makes 64 gallons per water session, with seven units would make 448 gallons of water. Each reservoir that we are using will store 40 gallons, so for two units would be 80 gallons, and with the 14 total reservoirs for the seven units would make 560 gallons, which makes for the needed 448 gallons needed. Water flows through dirt and burlap easily, but would only flow through tote bag material once there's enough weight or holes more would be discussed in a later slide. And the flood system that we are using will need a level surface in order to water evenly. That means either adding extra wood or removing dirt to make the ground more level. The people from the city of Charlottetown will be coming in to look at the design. These are some anticipated questions with our answers provided. Why do you need reservoirs instead of just using the hose on the inside of the design? Uh, the hose had a high chance of breaking and would need to be checked constantly. For the question how much time will be spent per week by workers, uh, for watering the trees three times a week, you'd be spending 2.91 hours in total over the three days for the work week, being 58.2 minutes for one day, uh, 20 of those minutes would are, have been added each day to account for walking between each of the units. Transportation and the benefits of the tote bag would be, it can be picked up by handles with a forklift and then transpor transported via a vehicle. Another question, uh, changing from a tileable design to an individualized design since the hoses are no longer included in the units, they are no longer needed to be connected to each other and can actually be individual. And for the last question about even wa water distribution, uh, for even water, adding extra wood flooring to make the level ground or just by removing dirt to make the ground level would fix that. Lastly, I'll hand it back off to Ethan to discuss potential iterations that we would recommend. For our recommendations on potential iterations um, for our design, we believe that eyelets should be installed on the tote bags to allow water to easily flow through. Without these, we are not 100% confident that the tote bags will be able to provide the trees with ample water. So adding these eyelets in will allow us to have more assurance on that factor. Um, a level platform to place the design on would help water to be evenly distributed and prevent the plastic liner from ripping. This again could be any material. Um, one recommendation we did have was wood, but an alternative such as a flat concrete base would also suffice. When constructing the design, some slack should be provided to the plastic liner to prevent ripping when, a full, when full tote bags are placed in. Um, this, again, is just to assure that the design does not break. Um, this would also be helped by a level platform. 
And lastly, alternatives to cinder blocks could be used to elevate the, the reservoirs if alternative materials are available. These cinder blocks that we recommended were just the um, base option that we had discussed. And besides that, we just have our appendix, which we will send to you via email. Thank you, and have a nice day.